the numbers that are out there, right? All the numbers that are out there. You've got uh, the inflation numbers. You've got the unemployment numbers. You've got the numbers of illegals coming into the country. Uh, you've got the trillion dollars in credit card debt over that now. You've got all of these numbers floating around, but the one number, like I said before the break, the one number the left cannot fix or do anything about, no matter how hard they try, the number is 80, soon to be 81. Joe Biden's age is a continuing theme for voters, and not a good one, who say by overwhelming numbers that he is just too old to do the job. And of course, they see him stumbling around like you and I do, confused on stage, floundering with a teleprompter, and looking generally lost more often than not. It's sad, really. Joe looks old, tired, and senile. And every honest person can see it. And that's why people like David Axelrod, James Carville, and other high-profile Democrats are calling for him to drop out of the race. These are dyed-in-the-wool Democrats, liberals, progressives, saying he's got to go. How does the governor argue, the governor of Maryland, that is, argue in favor of the elder abuse of Joe Biden? His age doesn't go away. So the governor does what politicians do best. He talked about himself, of course. <laughs> Here it is. You saw 73% in the exit poll. 73% of those who voted uh, said that they do not, they would prefer somebody other than Biden to run. Uh, and that's even more that 63% said they would uh, prefer somebody other than Donald Trump to run. So how does President Biden deal with these questions? I mean, I, I know there's still, you know, there's still the idea in the hand wringing of what polls look like a year away from Election Day. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a pundit. Uh, You're not concerned you know, about this at all? Concerns about his age? I, I'm not. I mean, I, I think about where the polls were for my race a year before Election Day. I was polling a little over 1%. By Election Day, I ended up winning with more individual votes than anyone who's ever run for governor in the history of the state of Maryland. Which is completely off point, completely meaningless, and completely narcissistic. Thank you, Governor, for stopping in and talking about yourself, which you do very well. Uh, there is not an easy answer for the Democrats. They're stuck with the monster they created and paved the way for. Now when they know he has to go, they're stuck and don't seem to know what to do to rid themselves of the senile old man wandering around telling the same old discredited stories day after day. Just keep lying. That apparently is the plan from Democrats right now. Just keep lying propaganda, spin, put it out there because they cannot figure out how to get Joe to step aside or more accurately, how to get Jill Biden to step aside. They have the throne and damn it, they aim to keep it. So the sheep need to line up accordingly. You pay attention. I. Dr. Jill. Doctor. Yeah, I got a doctor for you. Listen to this. The, as you say, we are in turmoil all around the world. And I will tell you at least once a week when I'm you know, with the president and watching him with world leaders, I feel so grateful that he is the man in charge of our country right now. Uh, he has the right temperament and experience. Yeah, I feel so grateful. <sighs> right. Right now, it's all adding up to Joe losing and losing badly because now you have another name in the race. The Democrats hate and accuse of causing them the White House in 2016. That name, Jill Stein. Yep, she's back in the race. Green Party, I think, didn't pay a lot of attention. So here you have senile Joe, former President Donald Trump, RFK Jr., Cornell West, and Jill Stein, and soon someone from no labels like Joe Manchin, whoever it turns out to be, but Joe Manchin says he's going to go on the road around the country and talk to people. None of that bodes well for Joe and Jill who went up the hill to Pennsylvania Avenue. No, it doesn't add up, because in that scenario, Donald Trump wins and wins big. In fact, all the latest polling shows Donald Trump winning by six, seven, eight points now in a, in a wide race with several parties represented. And there's another big headwind. That is voters of color taking the exit ramp and leaving the Democrats behind. Something else they cannot seem to admit. They can't seem to understand. Well, why, why, why would voters leave us? Black voters aren't going to leave us. Hispanic voters, yes, they are. In fact, the latest polling that shows uh, credible numbers shows Donald Trump pulling 22% of the black vote and 45% of the Hispanic vote. And it's only going to get bigger and worse for the Democrats. Trust me on this. But over on MSNBC, you see, they try to wallpaper the failures of Joe Biden and the surge of black voters moving to Donald Trump. 
And Jim Clyburn, the congressman who really converted Joe Biden into being president by saving South Carolina for him in 2020, he decided to blame the Supreme Court for all of it. Strange twist on things, but here, here's Jim. Listen. I mean, do you believe that Joe Biden's doing that poorly among black voters? Absolutely not. Let me tell you what you're saying there. People are focusing on some of the unfinished business. Sure, I'm disappointed, as any other black person, that we have not been able to renew the Voting Rights Act. But we are going to show why. Why haven't we done it? Because this conservative, MAGA-leaning Supreme Court has deficit, uh, desecrated uh, the Voting Rights Act. And we have not been able to get the Republicans in the Congress uh, to renew it. And so a lot of black people are disappointed that that has not gotten done. Yeah. <sighs> they just don't get it. You, you got to keep them down. You got to have victims in order to have power in the Democrat Party. You see, in the Republican Party, we celebrate success, not victimhood. We celebrate achievement, not failure. We want people that work hard. We want people that work hard, believe in this country, believe in God. That'd be a nice bonus, wouldn't it? And believe in America as being the best place on earth to be if there's rule of law and competent government and real leadership. That's what we want. When we say make America great again, those are some of the things we're talking about, the tenets of American exceptionalism. That's what we're talking about, all right? We'll take a break. Uh, no exception for the breaks. We'll be back.